Hello friends, this is Anand Pai, owner of Academy in Pursuit of Engineering Excellence. Today we will continue with fluid mechanics in that chapter 1, properties of fluids. In that part 5, kinematic viscosity or momentum diffusivity and its significance. Now let us have a recap of whatever we have done till now. We had seen what is a flow, we had seen what is a fluid, we had seen Newton's law of viscosity, then we have seen how viscosity of liquids can be expressed in terms of millipascal second and gases in terms of micropascal second. And we had also seen viscosity of liquids decrease and viscosity of gases increase with increase in temperature. Before seeing what is momentum diffusivity, we will understand what is diffusivity first. Now diffusivity can be understood well by using this particular experiment. Here what I have done is, I have put a drop of phenyl inside a glass of water. Now you can see that the drop of phenyl is getting spread inside the fluid and this is spread inside this water and this spread is called diffusion. Now diffusion happens because there is less concentration of this phenyl here in, uh, in the other part of this water and is high concentration at some parts. So it tries to uh, make the concentration uniform. So it goes from higher concentration region to a lower concentration region. Now the law that governs this diffusion process is called fixed first law of diffusion. Here J is the mass diffusion flux. Flux in the sense amount of mass that is in kgs which is crossing a particular surface per second per unit area is called mass diffusion flux is equal to mass diffusivity into gradient of concentration. Gradient of concentration is called d phi by dx where, x, where phi is the concentration. Now let us see some process which is similar to the diffusion of mass and that is diffusion of energy. Now here the one which is equivalent to mass diffusion flux is the heat diffusion flux or heat flux which is given by Q whose unit is watt per meter square. Watt is joules per second per meter square. So it is uh, analogous to mass diffusion where mass is analogous to heat here. Okay. And here K is the thermal conductivity. Now this thermal conductivity is not analogous to D because here phi is mass concentration that is kg per volume. Now here this should be energy per volume but here this T is the temperature and Y is the direction. So here this, the gradient is okay, but here it should not be temperature. So what shall, what shall we do? We will see, what we will do is, we will add up, we will divide this by heat capacity and this we will multiply by the heat capacity. Now we can know, we know that rho into C, rho is the density, C is the specific heat. This makes the heat capacity of the medium. Rho is mass per volume and when we put this here, we get this heat capacity converted into, when we put mass by volume, we get energy per unit volume, which is energy concentration. And dmc t by v divided by dy gives gradient of energy concentration. Now, energy flux is energy diffusivity into gradient of energy concentration. So here we can see this alpha is analogous to this D. So mass diffusivity and energy diffusivity are analogous to each other. Similar to heat diffusivity, mass diffusivity, we have something called diffusion of momentum which comes from Newton's law of viscosity. Now in Newton's law of viscosity, we know tau is mu into du by dy. Now we will do one thing, we will divide mu by rho which is the density and here density comes under the inside the differential term. Now rho can be written as mass by volume. So what comes is mass into volume, uh, mass into velocity divided by volume. This mass into velocity is nothing but momentum. So similar to concentration, energy, here we have momentum per unit volume or momentum concentration per unit volume. And the diffusion of this momentum per unit volume is governed by this kinematic viscosity or momentum diffusivity. So here momentum flux 
is equal to momentum diffusivity into gradient of momentum concentration. So here just like mass and heat is diffused, here fluid momentum is diffused. Now let us see the units of viscosity. In SI units, this mu which is kinematic viscosity is given by dynamic viscosity by gamma. So SI unit becomes meter square per second. CGS units become centimeter square per second, which is called one stoke. One, st one stokes, always in plural, okay. One stokes is equal to 10 power minus 4 meter square per second. Now let us see the physical significance of kinematic viscosity or momentum diffusivity. See, kinematic viscosity is equal to mu by rho, dynamic viscosity by density. And we have seen that kinematic viscosity is momentum diffusivity. It diffuses momentum. Okay. So now what do you mean by mo diffusion of momentum? This is what we will see. Now for this, consider a flow between two flat plates with one flat plate stationary and the other flat plate moving. The molecules of the gas or the liquid which is in between the plates uh, will be in motion because of this. Now the way it will go in motion is because of the particle which is near to the plate here will have the same velocity as that of the plate. Now how do we come to this conclusion? This can be done by two ways. We can think this particular plate is not very smooth and between the hills here, hills and valleys here, these particles will get stuck and this will be pushed. This is in case of gas. In case of liquid, we can consider adhesion between the particle and the plate. So with these both cases, it can be considered the things, uh, the condition which can be assumed is no slip condition. That is, there is no slip between fluid particle and the um, and the plate here. Now, once this fluid particle is set into motion with the same velocity as that of the plate, now the lower particles will, would also have to move with this. Now here, the lower particles will not move with the same velocity as that of the plate because of the inertia of this particle. Okay, This inertia is extended by increasing rho. More the rho, more the inertia. Whereas viscosity is because of collision or cohesion. So more cohesion or more collision is increasing the chances of this being transferred, this velocity being transferred, whereas more the density makes the velocity transfer lesser. So that is why momentum diffusivity is the ratio of dynamic viscosity by rho. Rho hampers diffusion, mu increases the diffusion. So this is the importance, this is the physical significance of kinematic viscosity or momentum diffusivity. Here we have to understand it is not related to the force, it is related to the velocity. Here we are not worried about what is the force required for this to go, uh, this, this uh, plate to be set in motion. We are seeing once the velocity is got, how the velocity is diffused in the fluid. Now, we will compare mu with nu. Now, when you say mu, mu is worried about the force. More the mu, more the force required to set this plate into motion. What is required, if we see mu, mu is, uh, or the shear stress here, the force because of mu, the shear stress is proportional to du by dy. Now, this du by dy is what is there at the wall or at the boundary here. So here more the du by dy, more the force required. More the force required, more the power required to uh, make the thing to move. Now this particular equation is for the pipe. Okay, Inside the pipe, what is the pumping power required for the, uh, what do you say, for the liquid or the gas to be pumped along this pipe. Now L is the length of the pipe, V is the average velocity and mu is the viscosity. So this is the power required. So the power required for pumping is proportional to mu. What does that mean? It means the force required. Okay, the force is more as the mu 
increases. So dynamic viscosity is related to mu uh, force and kinematic viscosity is related only with velocity. That is the reason it is kinematic and dynamic. When we say dynamic, dynamics is one part of mechanics which is related to force. Kinematics doesn't consider force. That is the reason it is called kinematic viscosity. Now let us understand more about this. Now kinematic viscosity is required to, uh, is plays an important role in setting the entry length. What do you mean by entry length? See, whenever the uh, fluid uh, with uniform velocity enters this pipe, the velocity profile will be flat here. Eventually, because of momentum getting diffused, it comes to parabolic profile. Now, how well the para, uh, how quick this happens depends on momentum diffusivity or nu. So here, entry length is a function of Reynolds number, which is in case Reynolds number is V d by nu. So more the nu, lesser the L e, and lesser the nu, more the L e. So entry length is a function or the inverse function of momentum diffusivity. Now here, the same thing happens with the boundary layer. Now in the boundary layer, the velocity which is initially flat, velocity profile which is flat, eventually goes to a parabolic profile and this happens because of the momentum diffusivity. And this boundary layer is made by a point where velocity is almost 99% of the free stream velocity. Here the velocity, yeah, it is almost 99% that of the free stream velocity. Now the boundary layer thickness is equal to 5x by root rex. Rex is vx by mu. That means Reynolds number increases with x. This is the x direction. So with x, the Reynolds number increases. So here, when you see rex, there is a root of nu here. You see root nu comes to the numerator. So the boundary layer thickness at any point is the direct uh, has is directly proportional to root of viscosity, the kinematic viscosity. This is because more the kinematic viscosity, more the diffusion and higher the uh, boundary layer thickness. So this is the importance, this is the physical significance of the uh, kinematic viscosity. Now let us compare this particular thing with the different types of fluids. Now you can see that in case of water, the viscosity is 0.9, whereas in case of air, it is almost 1000 times lesser, okay, or almost uh, much, much lesser than this, okay. So it is 0.9 here, it is 18.46 into 10 power minus 3. So what does this mean? This means that if we have to uh, uh, create a particular velocity in water, it is going to be difficult, but air, it is going to be easy. But if you consider the kinematic viscosity, now kinematic viscosity is more for air and less for water. What does that mean? That once you create a particular velocity, it is very easy. The velocity is propagated very fast in case of air and very slowly in case of the uh, water. So it is not related to force. Kinematic viscosity is not related to force, it is related to velocity propagation or momentum diffusion. Same thing you can see with mercury. Mercury has more viscosity than water. So to make the power required to pump mercury is more, whereas the leading uh, also here, uh, it is the kinematic viscosity is comparable. Although uh, water pumping power uh, is less as well as the leading uh, entry length. Entry length is more in case of uh, water and less in case of mercury, but it is comparable. We see this. Okay. So you can see this. Even we can see what I want to say here because of this is that it is not just the viscosity that is important. It is also kinematic viscosity that is important. When we stir something, okay, the difficulty with which the steering happens is based on the force we have to apply for uh, uh, for steering something is based on uh, dynamic viscosity but when we see about 
how the steering forces or steering velocity gets propagated everywhere it depends on the kinematic viscosity so let us summarize whatever we have done till now till now we have seen kinematic viscosity is used to determine the rate at which momentum diffuses given the momentum gradient when dynamic viscosity is a measure of how much force is required to change the momentum kinematic viscosity is a measure of how fast the momentum diffuses once the momentum change occurs now kinematic viscosity is the ratio of dynamic viscosity by the density that means more the density less the kinematic viscosity because there is more inertia more the viscosity more the kinematic viscosity because it helps in momentum transfer by collision or cohesion unit of kinematic viscosity in meter square per second in si units and stokes in scgs unit which is centimeter square per second kinematic viscosity is an important parameter in determining hydrodynamic entry length in pipes as well as boundary layer thickness in external flows so hope you have understood what we have what i have uh, told you till now and uh, if uh, you have further queries any doubts you can give in the comment i will try to uh, try to clear those doubts uh, as well as uh, kindly subscribe to my, to my channel click the bell icon so that you could get further notification of new videos uh, thank you very much and best of luck